Hey friends, today's video is a quick update video on my own personal car, which is currently a 2019 Macan S, Porsche Macan S, a uh, car I've been extremely happy with. In fact, easily the most reliable Porsche I've ever owned. Not that that would be that hard, but yeah, no problems with this car. It is a sweet little machine. Um, my overall impressions of it is that it's just a beautiful luxury car. You know, a lot of Porsche in particular tend to market or over market the Macan as a sports car, which mm, I would tend to disagree on. I think it's much more of a luxury car. Perhaps the Turbo is a little bit more of a sporty car, but yeah, I, I find it to be a very luxurious car, very solid feeling car, just a sweet car to drive either short distances or long distances. I took it up to um, Vermont last weekend. I, I was up in Vermont for the weekend and I drove a few of the mountain roads that I used to drive in my 911. And, you know, the, the, the twisty roads, the twisty mountain roads, a lot of fun in a sports car, but in a heavy SUV like this, eh, you know, it's, it, I, was, I felt a lot more comfortable just driving in a more relaxed manner. So yeah, it's certainly a luxury car for me, not a sports car. And as it turns out, even though this has been the best Porsche I've ever owned, I'm actually trading this in for a 2020 Macan S in a few days' time. That's why I wanted to do this video. I know, I'm crazy, um, because there's really absolutely nothing wrong with this car. It is beautifully configured, it is a very sweet car, and I absolutely love driving it. I've already done 5,000 miles on this car in just a couple of months. It shows you how much I enjoy being in this car. But the one thing I am not that happy with in this car and I'm willing to pay a little bit of money to, to correct is the colour. Uh, I've never owned a grey car before and once I, once I got this car I thought oh it's a lovely car and then as soon as I got it on the road I realised oh my god. Americans, everybody drives a black, grey or white car. Well not everybody but most people and I just, eh, I just don't want to be same, 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 same as everyone else. I want a little bit of colour in my life. So. I'm taking the opportunity to change the color and uh, change the configuration just ever so slightly to my personal taste. I'm going to add the air suspension and take off a few of the options on this car that I, that I don't really care about um, and, and get the car that is perfect for me because I'm really enjoying having the Macan. As I've said before, I'm still looking to get a sports car at some stage but this is my daily driver and more happy I could not be. Also today I've got myself um, base Macan in lovely carmine red. And the reason for that is I wanted to talk a little bit about the outgoing model, this, the, the 2019 model. Not that there's any differences. In fact, the only difference between the 2019 and the 2020, as far as I know, is price. They all go up $1,000. So the 2019, if you don't care which model year you've got, the 2019 is definitely a bargain. And particularly a bargain right now because dealers have got stock of 2019s that they probably want to get rid of. So if you're looking to get the modern shape Macan, the 2019 is definitely the bargain to get. And right now you should be looking to get double digit discounts on these cars. If you cannot find a dealer that's willing to discount your Macan uh, at 10% at, at or so, uh, yeah, let me know. I, I know that my dealer's still got a few uh, Macan S's and base Macans left over and they'll definitely do that sort of discount for you and they'll ship it anywhere in the country. So yeah, um, if you're looking for the, the modern Macan and you want a bargain, get the 2019 now before they've all disappeared. Of course you can't custom order it, any custom orders are still going to be uh, 2020 orders so, so you'd be paying a little bit more for that. So I want to address the most common questions about the Macans uh, and probably the thing I get emailed the most about is the uh, four cylinder engine. So William and I are going to jump into the four cylinder one right now. Bing! Here we are in the 2019 base Macan in the Carmine Red. See what I'm talking about? A little bit of colour and these cars look fantastic. So yes, the base Macan. The question everybody asks of horse is, is the engine powerful enough? And my answer is yes, the en engine's certainly powerful enough. Certainly at low speeds, it's quite responsive. Where of course this engine does not shine is, you know, at higher speeds on the highway. Um, if I put my foot down, even down in third gear, it's sort of meh, sounding a little un-Porsche like, but still fine. If this is your price point, you know, the, the base Macan is still a beautiful luxury solid car, whoa, to drive. Just drive on the hard shoulder there, <laughs> Sentra. Jeepers, what are you guys doing? Crazy Connecticut drivers. Um, yeah, 
it's still a lovely luxury solid car to drive still a step above many other marquees there's just a few little changes obviously aside from the engine uh, you get the different tack meter with the with the base macan the black one which i actually prefer interestingly you can't configure the multi-function display to show the turbo pressure even though this is a turbocharged car small cosmetic differences like the door frame is plastic not aluminium and of course you get the different exhausts at the back which can be optioned out if you like otherwise i don't really have any complaints with the base model it is still an absolutely gorgeous lovely luxurious car to drive it just you know it just doesn't have perhaps the power you'd expect at this price point and perhaps the sound that you'd expect for a Porsche. So let's go back to my car, the S. So here we are back in my S, which is unquestionably a little bit more suited for the weight of this car. I still wouldn't say that it is sprightly, I wouldn't say it's sporty, but it's very comfortable. And I think the three liter engine uh, suits the weight and size of this car a lot more. Uh, if you want sporty, you really need to go up to the turbo and I'm waiting for the GTS to see what comes out from there. <laughs> of course, I've got to be careful what I say about the GTS because there is no more militant group of Porsche owners than, than the Macan GTS owners. I said something in a previous video <laughs> and man, I get it showered with hate mail. <laughs> oh, people, people that own the Macan GTS are very sensitive about their cars. In fact, I've seen a subgroup on the Macan forum that is specifically there to rebuke everything that Nick Murray says about the Macan GTS. Yes, the Macan GTS, it drives just like a 911. It sounds just like a 911. <laughs> Very passionate group of people, the Macan GTS people. So I plan to piss them off more by reviewing the, the new Macan GTS when it comes out in some future date. But yeah, we'll be seeing the uh, turbo pretty soon. Right now, a lot of people have been asking me about discounts on the turbo as well. Uh, Porsche only released very small allocations on the turbo for now so you probably won't find um, decent discounts anywhere in the country until they ramp up production of that model. So the next most common question I get is people ask me about what the different modes the Sport uh, individual and Sport Plus modes and so forth do and the answer to that is not always straightforward because it depends on the options in the car. A lot of people think that just because they have Sport Chrono changing to Sport Plus or Sport Mode is going to change the exhaust tone, it's going to change the height of the car, it's going to change the ride of the car, etc, etc. It is all dependent on the options you've got. Like if you've got air suspension, yes, it's going to change the ride height of the car. If, you, if you've got Sports Exhaust, then yes, it's going to change the tone of the, uh, of the exhaust. But yes, if you have none of the Sports options, then putting the car into Sport Mode really just does things like change the throttle response, and change how quickly it changes gears and so forth. Uh, generally won't make any same changes to the sound, won't change the ride height and, and if you don't have PASM obviously it's not going to change the uh, harshness of the ride etc etc. Another common question I get is on the size of the rims. Uh, people um and are about the rims that they get with their Macan obviously because this is a very expensive option and it does make a di big difference to both how the car handles and how the car looks. I've got the 21 inch spider rims on this car and on that uh, four cylinder car that I'm driving today. And this car does not have the air suspension. Police reported ahead. This is one of the great things about this new model is that I can have Waze running in the background on the PCM telling me about police and whatever else, but otherwise it just runs like normal. I love this feature. This is there is the policeman right there. Um, yeah, this is one of the best upgrades about the newer Macan is that having Waze running in the background warning you of stuff is so worthwhile. Yeah, not available on the previous models. Obviously, you could have Apple CarPlay running on the previous models, but it wouldn't have stuff running in the background even if you're in a different mode or whatever. So, yeah. Sorry, sidetrack there. <laughs> Back to the wheels question. So the common question I get is if I'm getting a tw the 20 inch wheels or the 21 inch wheels, do I need to get the PASM or the air suspension or both in order to compensate for the larger rim size? Uh, and my answer is no. My car today is got, has got the 21 inch wheels, so does the four cylinder Macan I'm driving today. Without the PASM and without the air suspension and it is still a beautiful, smooth, lovely ride. They have tweaked the steel suspension to make it as perfect as it can be. You don't need the air suspension or the PASM. It does improve things, no question about it, but if you're looking to save the money, you're gonna be perfectly happy with the ride in these cars uh, without those options. 
So we'll head back to my place and we'll have a quick look at this new 12 inch PCM that uh, a lot of people ask me questions about. And the first thing to say is that the, this PCM, while it looks the same, is quite different in each Porsche model. That is, if you look at the Cayenne and the Panamera and the new 911, uh, many different functions in those PCMs than in the, than the, the Macan PCM here, which is a lot more simple. Um, and um, some fewer fe features as well. For example, uh, in the Macan PCM, uh, you get satellite navigation, FM, AM, online and Bluetooth, but you do not get the, um, the jukebox like you used to get. They used to get a 10 or 40, depending on what year car you had, uh, a megabyte, sorry, gigabyte jukebox. You don't get that in this, but in some of the higher level cars, you definitely get, still get a jukebox. So no jukebox, people have been asking me about that. Um, this one, of course, ties in with the little uh, multifunction display that's been around since 2010. It was originally debuted in the Panamera. Uh, it was a lower resolution version back then, they changed it to this higher resolution in 2012. And I love the way that the new PCM integrates with the old um, little multifunction screen, which I still love. I, I've got a, I love this little round screen, even though it doesn't hold as, nearly as much information as the new uh, full screens that you see in the Panamera, Cayenne, and the 911. Uh, I like that they've kept this little screen and it will be here f until 2022, I guess, uh, this, little, this little screen. But back to the main 12 inch screen. The 12 inch screen, uh, the, the big advantage, of course, is that you can do more than one thing on it, uh, which I love. And it does multifunction quite well. That is, if you've got an application running in the background, it still runs nicely while you're doing something in the front. And it's, it's reasonably configurable. You can pull down a menu here, uh, configure the home screen, and you can drag uh, bits and pieces onto here. Like if I want, I can put the phone information, the phone, the phone, here we go phone information down here for example how many calls I've got showing there and then when I come back to the main screen uh, it shows phone here and you can have this as one big screen or uh, whatever and you can configure the side widget as well or you can uh, expand one thing to be the full screen if you want um, uh, and say you go into Apple CarPlay for example uh, you can still have your this other widget here running doing other things, showing, showing the internal um, uh, navigation or you know your other widgets here. So it is pretty cool like that and of course Apple CarPlay uh, works very nicely on this. They've fixed all the problems that the 2017 edition Porsches had with the Apple CarPlay. Uh, now it, you can stop the car, start the car, it all works very nicely. Um, one question a lot of people ask me about this is can you expand Apple CarPlay to full screen? No, not at the moment. There is the button to do it, but it does nothing. So I am sure they'll change that at some point. I don't see any reason why. Every other car manufacturer allows Apple CarPlay to be full screen. Uh, the button's there to do it, but it just doesn't work at this point. Um, the downside with Apple CarPlay that I've found, um, and it's a downside with the system uh, generally, is that there's no next track, previous track buttons anymore. It used to have in the in the PCM 3.1, the previous one, there was at least a forward or back or up here, forward and back tracks. So if you were playing some music, for example, you're in the music, you were playing whatever, uh, playing now, playing now, David Bowie, whatever. When you're on here, you can go forward and back a track. So if you don't want to hear a song, forward and back a track. But when you're doing something else, say you're in uh, Google Maps and you want to forward to the next track, there's no way of doing it. App, um, Porsche allows you to use this multi-function button here to do forward tracks if you like, but that doesn't work with Apple CarPlay. So yes, if you're doing something else in Apple CarPlay, which I personally find is something I do want to do all the time, like I get to a song, oh, I don't want to hear that song, I want to forward a track, and there's just no way of doing it if you're in another app. If you're using the internal media, not the Apple CarPlay, this button will work for forwarding to the next uh, station or the next track, but otherwise, yeah, you can't even have a widget over here for Apple CarPlay to move songs on, so I find that annoying. Next question people often ask me is, um, how do I get the favorites to be always popping up on the main screen? Well, I don't know. Uh, for me, it always comes up on the home screen, and then I have to go to media, either by pressing this button or pressing that button, 
and then I have to go to favorites. It is long-winded to get to favorites, and then you can program favorites, anything you like in there, um, but yeah, getting there is very annoying, and then you can maximize that as well. Uh, so there must be a way. Why a Porsche having a favorite screen, which is so buried deep? Otherwise, the biggest difference is here in the settings, in the Macan, the Cayman, and the Boxster. Obviously, you get far fewer options, and so you don't get as many settings, and even with the base models, there's just fewer things in here. Whereas if you look into any of the upper models, the 911, the Cayenne, and the Panamera, there's just pages and pages of settings in here. But yeah, overall, it's okay. I wish there was a forward track and a reverse track button, and I wish they'd left the jukebox in. I mean, how much money that would have that cost them? But otherwise, it's, it's a nice system. Uh, it just needs a little bit more tweaking. And if you're wondering where to acquire the ridiculous t-shirts that I wear in my videos, they're all here in my store, all your favorites, uh, including offensive stamps and my rapid dry towels as well. Yes, Nick Murray t-shirts, being a little inappropriate since 2016.